Hey, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the All Portable Discussion Zone, a bi-weekly live stream all about amateur radio portable ops. My name is Charlie, call sign is November Juliet 7 Victor, and we welcome you to the show. Happy Independence Day. I hope you're having a good one. Uh, it'll obviously, Independence Day is tomorrow. I uh, hope you're having a good time with the uh, 13 uh, colonies and other events that are going on. Uh, so with me this evening are the show, one of the show's co two co-hosts, uh, Dan, KC7MSU. Good evening. And, uh, and Brian, uh, W7JET, he's out doing his uh, pilot thing, so probably not with us tonight. And I'm also pleased to uh, introduce to you tonight's guest, Mike, WO9B. And of course, as always, we have uh, our regulars in the chat room and a few extras. We see Vince is in there. Welcome, Vince. Uh, if you have a comment or a question, go ahead and throw that in the chat, and uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and do our best to respond. Not near as good as, as Larry is on the Ham Radio Live, but we try to do uh, our, the best we can. Don't forget that this uh, is a uh, podcast show as well, so about 24 hours after we go live, it'll be available on most podcast players. So let's go around, go around uh, and find out what everybody has been up to the last uh, couple of weeks and uh, get get updated. Dan, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> last weekend was uh, field day, so still recovering from that. Uh, matter of fact, on Thursday, I finally got my stuff all unpacked, so I was right on schedule with that. Um, so just kind of uh, seeing, you know, getting back into the work group was uh, not easy after field day. But uh, it was a real, uh, real good time. So really enjoyed last weekend. Yeah, well, I want to thank you so much, uh, Dan. You, you were like the spearhead of uh, the club's uh, field day activities this year and uh, did a super job. You and, of course, Jeff was a part of that. And, and uh, there were others as well. But, uh, I mean, you drove up the U-Haul, man, right? Up in the, up in the rain and the mud. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Those uh, four-wheel drive tires on the U-Haul just uh, made their way up to the forest road. So it was pretty exciting driving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. Well, and, of course, I was field day in it, too. I Actually, we, Sandy and I were the first uh, to go to that. It's, we have private land that we uh, are allowed to use. Up in, It's like a piece of private land right in the middle, completely 100% surrounded by forest service land and so we get in there and have a good time um sandy and i got there thursday morning set up camp and then went and hit a couple of summits on the air activations on thursday uh then got rained on got dri driven off the mountain raining and then uh it was rained all that night got up the next morning and says we don't care and and by the time we got up to the summits uh, on uh, day two it was all cleared out again so we did two more summits Bef just and that was all thursday friday and then and then field day happened, so uh, we had to leave a little early, of course, too, because uh, we had commitments in, in town. But uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of what we've been up to. And then uh, we have uh, we did another in-town Mini Morning Madness thing, I caught one or two of them since. So we've just kind of been really active with the uh, portable stuff, but uh, it comes and goes, right? So uh, what about you, Mike? What you been up to? Oh, well, field day was, was of course, loomed large for us this year. Uh, as usual, uh, we ended up uh, going, uh, I, I ventured out of Milwaukee and uh, it's, uh, it was two day trip up to the very top peak of, uh, of the UP of Michigan. Uh, and we had this rustic cabin uh, at the very, very north tip of the uh, Keweenaw Peninsula in the UP. It was staggeringly beautiful and uh, really, really nice. Uh, I, we took it as a, a good omen that on the way up there, a, a bear uh, walked in front of our car. So that, uh, that kind of was the big thumbs up for field day for us. So it was, oh. it was great. And then on the way out, on the way back, uh, which was a two-day venture back, uh, we did a soda hop. So hey, it was great. Right. Had a wonderful time. Cool. Um, so, all right, cool. You know, I'm glad, that, I'm glad to hear you did some soda, man. We love that. Uh well, so let's go ahead and get get to know you a little bit better, Mike. I, I know there's uh, some people in chat probably who don't know who you are, um, mm. and uh, I obviously uh, know who you are. I, I I actually first learned about who you were with your uh, with your antenna thing. We, we, maybe we talk about that a little bit later. But uh, you uh, have an antenna you like to share and and uh, or sell actually, and and uh, we'll talk about that. But uh, a little bit about where you're from, maybe, and and uh, kind of. Uh, you know what uh, how you got involved in in uh, portable radio oh uh well i like i said i i i'm, I'm out of the milwaukee uh wisconsin area and uh it's 
you know, I've been, I, I kind of got activated, uh, reactivated into the ham radio life at about 2015 or so, which coincided with the uh, AWRL's uh, national parks on the air routine. And that, uh, that, that was, if there was an ember glowing in my soul, that, uh, that blew some wind on it and it really caught fire. And, uh, that was just great to go out and play that game. Uh, and that got me going on portable operations. And, you know, uh, one thing led to another and, and I'm, I'm zipping antennas together and, and whatnot. And I ended up, uh, that long story short, that ended up into my little spark plug side gig, if you will, which, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. it. Seems to be very popular, and I can't, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of dumbstruck by that. But uh, we do all sorts of portable operations uh, as a function of our club in Milwaukee. And uh, uh, every Wednesday we go out, and it is a combination of social hour and uh, uh, working uh, working stations. I coincide it uh, with the CW Ops CWT Wednesday. Uh, 1900 CWT, which for me is at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and yes, the timing's great. And uh, any park in Milwaukee has got a, a couple of park benches available. And uh, uh, I've been very fortunate in the last couple of years. There's, oh, you know, our, our little Wednesday ops draw up to a dozen hams. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, a little bit of sunshine, uh, a park, and uh, a little bit of CW and portable ops, and there's not very many unhappy people there. Yeah, oh, cool. Hey, do you have a daughter named Sarah? I do. She's my marketing guru. Why do you say, I, I, how did you know that? Because she says, hi, dad. Right here, you see oh. on the screen. <laughs> oh, Sasa's on. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every, all the images you see regarding uh, uh, Sparkplug, uh, that's her ballywick. She keeps me from embarrassing myself, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's just talk about that a little bit more while, we, while we're on that, the spark plug thing. Uh, what gave you the idea? And, uh, and uh, j yeah, just talk a little bit about it. Well, uh, you guys all do spark, uh, all do, um, uh, you know, portable operations. And so, you know, uh, it, it just seems that portable operations, you can't have enough antenna solutions because every time you go out, it's something different, right? Uh, in the Milwaukee uh, and Wisconsin area, and, and because we're all somewhat myopic, uh, I just assume that uh, everybody has trees of plenty to toss wires in. And I realize in hindsight, that's not very accurate. Yeah. But uh, I, I gravitated to the NFED antenna because it's just, it gives me a, it's easy to deploy and it gives me a, an easy uh, a way to get a resonant antenna on, a, on, on different frequencies. Um, and so I, I started winding my own with, uh, you know, the usual toroid routine, and I kept dumping them in plastic boxes, and I kept breaking and snapping them. Yeah, let's face it, when you're in the park, things go wrong, or, you know, you're not always able to take care of things quite quite as well as, as you'd like. Yeah. So uh, ultimately, I, I just hit upon, I got tired of fixing my antennas, and I just hit upon the... Uh, the spark plug. And, uh, that's, uh, it's kind of this little robust, actually it's, you know, it's designed to take the stress. It's small, it's portable, it fits in the, in the bag and, and it's, it just works great. So, um, I've been using uh, one particular spark plug for about three years and it's, uh, got some battle scars to it, but boy, it just, it works as well as it did day one. So, yeah. So I got a, I got the website up. I see there's a, a bundle starter 50 watt for 100 bucks there, and yeah, it looks like it, who who makes your uh, wooden uh, um, what do you call winders? I uh, you know the wooden winders is, I, I I realized I needed something to to co kind of complete the package, and uh, if I if you start looking around for winders, they're all plastic, and I yeah, I think yeah. that's just kind of uh, kind of negative for for you know we're out in the wilds or. And I got to tell you, uh, Paul VA6 MPM uh, uh -huh. is a is a soda guy up in up in the Canadian Rockies, and he was telling me once about the you know the wind kicks up and it took his winder and blew it away. And I I said, well, good thing it was wood. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, all right. So it's a biodegradable winder, I guess, if you will. And I, I get them made out of uh, out of uh, a fella down in uh, in Texas makes them for me. Okay, cool. 
Uh, so Steve, a K0V4AFL says, I need to tune my spark plug antenna. So uh, when you get it, it's not tuned, obviously, then. And at what, what bands does it cover? Is it, is it the, 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 like the, what is it, 40, 20, 15, 10? Is that the? the, the yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's an end fed half wave. So uh, depending on what, uh, what length of wire you deploy, uh, there, you know, you, you can, you can kind of pick your poison, so to speak. Uh, I find for portable operations, the, uh, 60, 60 foot length of wire associated with a 40 meter antenna is just the right size. You can manage it. It's not too large, it's not too small. And, uh, if you properly tune your 40 meter wire to, uh, to 40 meters, you'll, uh, you'll get, uh, 20, 15 and 10, uh, as harmonic resonance, uh, yeah. as well. So it's just. Nothing magic. It's I refer to it as it's it's a technology uh, your grandfather would recognize. So nothing yeah. magic at all. But uh, the spark plug itself, I think, is a is a unique form factor, and that's kind of yeah. its appeal, if you will. It, yeah, it's obviously not an a, a, literally a uh, spark plug. It's just it just looks like the form factor of one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It. I. I. When I first made it, I had. I wasn't making spark plugs. I was just trying to come up with a, a decent end fed antenna that I wouldn't break on me. And by the time I got done, it looked exactly like the spark plug out of my my uh, lawnmower. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> cool. Let's see. Adesh from uh, hi says hi from Trinidad in the Caribbean. Thank you, uh, Adesh. Uh, welcome. Um. So no counterpoise on the antenna. Uh. No. Uh. I find it not necessary. Uh, mm -hmm. it, uh, the, it's the old coax braid routine. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I recommend that uh, people use 25 feet or so of coax. Yep. And uh, it, it'll work just fine. Uh, my fielding antenna this year was uh, a 50 watt spark plug. And uh, I, got, uh, I got excited and I ended up with a lot of extra battery power. So I, I was jamming 75 watts through my 50 watt spark plug. Uh, so I, uh, I I didn't have to make a warranty call to the guy who uh, you know sold me the spark plug. So, huh? Cool. Um, <laughs> Hiken and Hammond, <clears throat> he has a YouTube channel. I actually uh, Hiken and Hammond. I apologize. I forget your uh, your name and call sign right now, but uh, put it in the chat and I'll I'll mention it. But he says he's going to be talking about the spark plug in one of his upcoming videos. He used it in in uh, one of his section hikes uh, doing soda activations. So pretty cool. Uh, that's that's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, pop your uh, name and the call sign in there and we'll, uh, and obviously go, uh, go ahead and, uh, and, uh, visit his, his, uh, YouTube channel. It's K I four V E U. So Excellent. pretty cool. He has a good, he has a good YouTube channel. I like it. Um, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about field, field day then, since you said that you used your, your spark plug antenna, uh, his name is Lou. Um, what, uh, was field day like for you? What did, uh, where'd you go and, and tell us a little bit about your setup. Well, I, I, we went up to the very peak of the uh, Keweenaw Peninsula. If you don't know what that is, if you take a, if you look at a map of the uh, of the UP, uh, the Upper Peninsula of, of of Michigan, there's a little finger that sticks up, and that's uh, that's uh, kind of on the, oh, I don't know, the the, the westerly side of it, uh, and so it's about as far north as you can go in the state of uh, of uh, Michigan. Uh, literally, next stop is Canada. So, uh, and we've been doing the UP of Michigan for the last three years. And I, I just go up solo. I go up with my daughter and, and, and her boyfriend and we uh, uh, you find a place where, where there are no tourists and <laughs> we're pretty much on our own. And so we, we uh, took, we stayed in a, a rustic cabin and that, that is the rustic cabin. And that, that was my uh, field day setup, uh, which I, I use a, a Yesu FT891 because I, I, I determined I was going to go QRO this year. So uh, the, the 891 uh, jumped in place. I actually deployed, uh, I also, uh, the other thing you see there is a computer and I, uh, was not going to hand log this year. So the last couple of years I hand logged and this year I went full in on N1MM. And so what I ended up doing is I actually deployed two, uh, spark plug antennas. One I used as a receive antenna, uh, and, and that let me use the, uh, spectrum display on, uh, in the N1MM program. So it was really, it was really snappy to just use, to shoot, go from zip, zip, zip from uh, QSO to QSO. Yeah. Uh, I wish I could say I did great. I didn't, but I sure had a great time. <laughs> hey, you know, that's the most important part. A rustic yeah. cabin, that's awesome. And then uh, out up in the middle of nowhere, so there's not a lot of people around. And it was just the three of you then. 
Yeah, there's no electricity there. There's no cell service of any kind. Uh, there's a little solar panel on the roof uh, that uh, fed some, uh, you know, uh, lights on, on the inside of the cabin. And uh, we, uh, for, for three days, we uh, ate off the campfire and there was a wood burning stove in there that uh, kept the place warm. Uh, Sunday, a field day, uh, if it got up to 60 degrees, uh, that was tops. It was, yeah. it was great. Well, so why did, why didn't Susie go with you? Um, she's more of a, a Hilton head, uh, <laughs> Marriott, uh, sort of play, player. Uh, hey, you know we, what? That's fine. That's just fine. <laughs> we love them anyway, right? That's right. <laughs> that's right. Good. Well, she says, you see, see she a comment here, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh oh, she's right there listening. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so um, you had your daughter and her boyfriend there. Are is anybody else in your in your family licensed? Yeah, my son is licensed, but uh, he's uh, pretty much in the inactive column. He, uh, I think he, uh, I, I duck walked him into the uh, into the uh, the license exam, and uh, it just didn't catch didn't catch fire with him, but. Uh, uh, so no, I'm, I'm so I'm it. So I, uh, it, I, I, I can live with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, K a nine F R Z. Do you know him? He says, hi. Oh, oh, absolutely. Frank's actually part of the, uh, he's part of our ham club and part of the, uh, of the, uh, the spark plug team. He, uh, Frank's a retired FAA guy and he, uh, he makes all our cables and wires. Oh, so nice. I, I can say with a, with a, with a, 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 a wink and a smile that we have, uh, FAA certified technician putting our stuff together. So <laughs> that's awesome. Dan, do you have any questions at this point? Well, knowing that, I guess next time I get on a plane as a passenger, I can just uh, use that antenna and I'm sure it'll be okay with the pilot knowing that. So there well, we go. Dan, funny you should mention that uh, when I first started selling them, I got a outreach from a guy in, uh, in Australia and he bought two or three of them. And, and I was like, what are you going to do with two or three of them? And he goes, oh, I'm going to tow them behind my airplane. Really? That's what he said. I, I never had cool. the guts to follow up and see how that worked out. I'm not sure <laughs> I wanted to know. <laughs> now, that would be interesting to find out uh, how he did with them and stuff. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure I wanted to be there for when something went awry, you know? <laughs> yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to be on that aircraft. <laughs> yeah, let him, exactly. let him test it as a uh, pilot himself. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, so one of the reasons we wanted to talk, uh, bring you on today was because I think that you have had some pretty interesting portable radio experiences or portable optics experiences. Of course, everybody knows about Soda and Poda, and you've done both Soda and Poda. But mm -hmm. uh, you have this uh, thing, you mentioned it just briefly, but uh, talk a little bit more about uh, your your weekday, is it lunchtime thing uh, that you do and and, uh, and how that uh, works? You know, um, I, it started off, uh, it started off with, with our ham club. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a member of the uh, West Dallas Radio Amateur Club in Milwaukee. And uh, just on a lark, we would uh, look for activities. We'd, we'd uh, set up an occasional Let's go out and, and, and do the ham radio thing in a park. Uh, uh, it wasn't a formal thing. It was just, like I said, very occasional. And, and I really liked that. Uh, and, and the reason I liked that and, and, and what's worked out to be kind of our unofficial mantra is it's only an hour. So uh, people really like coming. I was surprised how much they like coming out for, you know, it's not a day. It's, you don't have to dri drive halfway across the state. It's just an hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so folks come out and, and, and play around. And I got to tell you, uh, as you well know, uh, the social side of ham radio is huge. And that's, that's the big part of it. So uh, what started off as an occasional thing, I decided to go and, and, and uh, I, somewhere along the way, I, I was, became a member of the CW Ops and was doing their, their, the CWTs. And I said, well, I can do that from a park. And so every Wednesday, I started going out to a park to do a CWT. It was me and my dog. And, and we just go to different parks. And of course, with the portable operations, it couldn't be simpler. And, I, and, and that was kind of the crucible in which I started to refine my, my portable gear and my portable ops and 
you know, how, how can I set up an antenna quicker, faster, easier, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's where the NFED became kind of my go-to antenna. Uh, I had tried, uh, you know, like the Wolf River Coil, a lovely antenna, but not a quick setup. It's, there's a little bit of, of work in setting it up, and it's not uh, frequency ver versatile. Uh, and and uh, the attraction of the of the NFED was uh, not just the versatile frequency, but the fact that uh, you know uh, it was it was a five minute setup and a five minute teardown. I was off and running. Yeah. Uh, and and you know if you if you bring a dog along, at least my little dog uh, it was like bringing a two year old along. It, it, as soon as you got to the park, the timer was running because he wasn't going to be there for. He wasn't going to put up with me being there for hour after hour after hour. So anyway, well, uh, and so as things go, uh, then people started showing up. Uh, Frank, KA9FZR, uh, has been a regular for years. And so I'd show up in a park and it's like, hey, Mike, what park are you going to? And so then I'd actually have to start thinking about it. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, I'm going to say like about a year ago or, or maybe a little better, um, it really started to take off. Then a lot of people are asking, hey, what park are you going to? So uh, we used Facebook as our, our publication medium. And so I'd list what park I'm going to on Monday or Tuesday. And uh, golly, uh, a bunch of people start showing up. And uh, now I, I do the Facebook posting and we do the, um, I also send out uh, an email list of, I don't know, a dozen people or so. And it is just so low key and, and fun and uh, guys show up and they test out their antennas or they just show up with no radio and uh, no intention of broadcasting a bit, but it's catch up time for the week. And it's just an hour. Yeah. It's wonderful. It, yeah. And we go to a different park every week. So there's no, no lock in and no yeah, pressure. And, and they're, they're no. city or local parks, right? They're not parks on the air parks, right? They're not parks on the air. And I, I, I in the pre-show, I, I joked about, uh, setting up a Mick Poda as a competing thing, which is the Milwaukee County parks on the air. And I maybe, maybe like talk about it enough. Uh, I'll, three people will bug me enough. We'll actually do something like that. So. <laughs> okay. Well, Vince, he says, uh, he wonders if your dog, your, your uh, dog does CW. Is, have, is there a backstory on that? <laughs> no, <laughs> I think there's a backstory on Vince, but I'm not going to get okay. into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so then there's this. Uh, I just wanted to mention. So, uh, Mike, great idea. I, I know that other people do this too, but uh, you were you've been successful in in uh, being a uh, de facto leader, getting people to get out on the air and get on the radio and to socialize. Um, I just want to mention also as somebody else. I, it just came to my mind, so I brought it up. Uh, Eric K zero E A P. I don't know if he still does this, but he used to do. A lunch. He was, he called it lunchtime on the air. Actually, oh. LT. Yeah, and he would get out there uh, on his lunches uh, between work and just take his portable gear and run to a park or something like that and just get on for you know I don't even think it was an hour, thirty minutes or whatever. But uh, he got a lot of great contacts that way over the years, and I, I he probably still does it. But uh, another kind of in in line with what you're talking about. Yeah, I, matter of fact, I was thinking about starting to do that uh, where I work now because I've got a pretty uh, primo parking spot under the parking structure <laughs> that may work out pretty well. It kind of, you know, has got me out of the sunshine. Matter of fact, uh, at Home Depot today, I bought some concrete and some uh, eyelets to use as anchors. I was going to make some uh, uh, some way down stuff so that uh, my my uh, dipole uh, would be easily set up. But uh, maybe I'll have to rethink that for an NFED. But uh, I'm thinking about uh, doing that at, like once a week. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can do, uh, you know, portable operations. You don't, like Charlie was saying, you don't necessarily have to do it as a soda or a POTA type activation. Just get out and operate. And you, you'd probably be kind of surprised how many people might show up and ask what you're doing. So, like, I don't know what you're uh, experience has been with that. Do you get a, quite a few people that stop by and, and ask questions about what you're doing and, and why you're doing it? Uh, not so much. Uh, we, uh, we interact with soccer moms and their kids from time to time. Uh, we've, uh, been asked to leave very rarely because of, uh, uh, the parks may have a reservation or something. Uh, but for the most part, two o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, it's, 
pretty open. There's, it's not a big challenge. So uh, not so much, which is I is a little bit odd, but uh, uh, you know, uh, you never know. You never know what the next day is going to bring. So, uh, and the Milwaukee area is blessed with uh, just a huge quantity of parks. Uh, we have uh, only, you know, dip the very, uh, the very top, the, the cream off the top. It's, uh, uh, there's plenty of parks for us to go to. So that's, we, we keep looking around, keep moving out around. Here, out here, we don't have, we've got a lot of smaller like neighborhood parks, but most of those don't have any kind of cover or ramadas and, and those kind of things. So it, it gets pretty blistering hot this time of year to be out mm. uh, operating, but uh, uh, they all have to give that a whirl as well. Well, our, our season runs from uh, the 1st of May till uh, oh, early, uh, early October. And anything before or after that, we consider bonus time because it, it gets pretty, uh, it gets pretty, uh, pretty stiff uh, early in the spring around here. So, and, and certainly uh, in the fall, it can, late fall is, is not pleasant to be outside around here. So that brings us, I guess, to the topic today, uh, which is, uh, you know, how do you do portable radio? That's the question I put up here on the, you can see in the, in the banner there. I'm interested in seeing what other people say about that. Uh, we'll talk about it too, but if you have an experience you'd like to share with somebody about uh, how you do portable radio uh, outside of the, you know, the standard soda, poda thing, you know, um, sometimes uh, some of the things that people do are pretty interesting and we'd like to hear from you. So put that in the chat. Uh, so I know here locally, we also have a uh, group that, that goes out on Thursdays uh, in the afternoon, I think, and, and does uh, kind of what you're talking about. Not the CWT, but they bring uh, gear and experiment and just get on the air. And I think that that's, uh, that's very good. I think that's, a, that's a important to do that. So um, for us, the, for the three of us, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what, uh, what are the different ways that we can do portable? We mentioned... Uh, parks on the air. We've mentioned summits on the air. We've met, we've mentioned field day. Uh, we've mentioned uh, uh, parks, local parks, getting out on local parks and doing uh, CWT. Uh, which uh, you know, before we go any further, maybe we ought to you ought to explain what that is. Actually, I don't, some people may not know what CWT is. Uh, yeah, the CWTs are are little mini contests that the uh, uh, CW Ops people do every Wednesday. Um, I would tell you it's not for the faint of heart in that uh, it can be a blazingly fast CW. Uh, it's, there's a few tricks that once you kind of get into the, into the format, it's, the speed becomes kind of secondary. But uh, uh, there's a, uh, I think it begins at, uh, there's 1300, 1900, and, and 300, 0300 is the, uh, are the three times. They run for an hour. They're little mini contests. And, uh, uh, and it's kind of all for fun, and, and it's a very much a, an honor system routine, uh, well attended. Uh, if you uh, turn your radio on, you'll see uh, usually 20 meters and 40 meters for one hour uh, uh, is just a blaze at, at, at those times. And it was like, what the heck's going on? It looks, looks like the old time CW bands, but it's, it's packed for, you know, about 15 kilocycles of the uh, CW band, and it's, it's it's very active. It's uh, what I refer to in a in a QRP event as a contact rich environment. So you you can't miss. You yeah. can't miss. And and that kind of is a there's a purpose behind why you go out for a, and do portable radio. Then it gives you a, a purpose, I guess you should say. I should say. Yeah. Uh, as does parks on the air and summits on the air and field day. Um, there are other things that you can do to uh, get out there and and uh, participate. Uh, so how do you do portable radio? I, I would say there's a few things that I want to mention as far as, I mean, these are, I do a lot of parks on the air and, and even more summits on the air. Uh, but, but when I do, um, one of the things that I like to do to, to, to switch it up and, and it's kind of my, one of the ways I enjoy it is, is just going FM only, for example. Uh, we do here in, in Arizona, I get, it, it gets really hot and you can't get really get out like Brian, like Dan said. Uh, during the day because it's just too hot to get out on a summit. It's dangerous. 
But uh, I, I enjoy getting up early, and, and some people may have seen some tweets and things about how my wife and I uh, recently, have, we got up at 4 a.m., and we drove to a local summit about 30, 45 minutes away, Did a, got our exercise, just hiked to the top of a mountain and back down, just threw a, a HT in, a handheld ta- uh, radio in, and uh, went to the top and just started calling CQ up at the top as the sun was rising, beautiful sunrise. And, and uh, we got our four contacts. We, got, actually, we like to get at least five, actually, so that in case one of us is uh, invalid. But uh, we got our, 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 we qualified the summit for the points. But for us, this was great exercise and a great, great opportunity to get out uh, uh, in the in the outdoors uh, b- before it got too hot. And uh, you know that's that's one way to do portable radio. Some people don't like to do uh, uh, FM. Uh, some people don't enjoy it. But for us, it was great. Uh, some people like to only do HF, and and there's there's just different modes. Uh, for example, FT8. I know some people like to just get out and get on get on FT8. Uh, have you done that before? Uh, I, 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 this year, uh, I added to my uh, bag of tricks, uh, the, uh, QRP labs, uh, little QDX box. Uh-huh. And, uh, that fit, uh, beautifully into my little QRP go bag. And, uh, so the only additional piece of equipment that I, I had to add to do FT8, uh, with that little QDX box is a, a laptop computer. So uh, the last soda op I did, uh, my goal was to do uh, FT8 only, uh, which was uh, you know a week ago, so to speak, and um, uh, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> I, I I had some problems. <laughs> so, I got some work to do on that one, <laughs> but uh, it was fun. I made like three contacts, and it's QRP Q, QRP uh, FT8 uh, on 20 meters, and uh, it was fun. Uh, it was great. I. You know, I, I my QRP radio is a is a little um, LNR uh, four band uh, CW only radio, uh, but I gotta say there's some great radios out there. I, I'm thinking the um, you know the ICOM 705 is a great radio for it's got it all, but it, it's not for me because I, it's not small enough. But it's <laughs> it's that's a great radio and it gives you, it gives you all sorts of options. Um, and, uh, hard, yep. you know, so, so, uh, you were mentioning the FT eight and, uh, and you, when you were talking about that, you were talking about, uh, QRP radios, which is usually how I operate, but I go QRO as well. Tell, uh, how, how do you, uh, determine when you're going to go QRP and QRO or do, is it just a whim or, I mean, cause those, <laughs> that's another, I guess, another, variation of going portable yeah yeah it's a choice uh, you know it depends on what you want to do um uh some days i, uh, I my very first soda operation was to a, a place up in the up i'd never done a soda before and down in southeastern wisconsin sorry about that bang the table uh there, it, there's not exactly very many hills uh so soda's kind of eh. but I, I i finagled a trip uh, inside a, a, an exclusive club way up in the in the UP called the Huron Mountain Club, and so my very first soda peak was Mount Huron, and it, I, I, it was my first time activating the soda peak, and it was the first time Mount Huron's ever been activated because it's on private land and, and it's very difficult to get to, etc. Um, and I wasn't going to screw that up, so I decided <laughs> to do a QRO operation, right? Yeah, and so I put in my backpack, my FT891 and uh, uh, an eight amp hour uh, battery and whatnot. And I did this with the intention that the group I was going with, uh, uh, the lovely Sarah and her boyfriend would help carry the load. And I was ignominiously told uh, at the beginning of the day, you know, they waited until then to spring on me that, oh no, you gotta carry your own stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like but i'm old <laughs> and they had no mercy on the old guy that day so <laughs> yeah. anyway so up we went to this mountain and but i have to say uh it was uh, uh i i probably wouldn't do that again <laughs> but yeah. but um uh, the qro was lovely and you know i i banged out uh, 50 watts and i made contacts in europe uh, and on the stupid wire, it was a spark plug, but 
you know, it was barely off the ground. And because you get to the tops of these mountains and you're lucky to have a tree that's eight feet tall that hasn't been hit by lightning or, or blown blown away. Matter of fact, when you when you had the um, uh, the picture uh, from my website, the main picture, that's from the top of Huron Mountain. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that, that's our very first soda operation. So, it's, oh yeah, here uh, it is. Oop, yeah. Let me see here, there. Yeah, yeah. That's the top of, of Mount Huron. That's uh, that's uh, that's my daughter's dogs and her uh, and that's her boyfriend Jeremy, and uh, a little rock Karen that's that's up there. It was just just beautiful. <laughs> Couldn't have been a nicer day. So, cool. well, so yeah, the, uh, the point is here, there are a lot of different ways in which you can do portable radio. Um, I like to mix, I mean, and it's, you know, you can't just do the same, I guess you can do the same thing over and over again and people do. Uh, but over time, I think it gets kind of monotonous and you got to mix it up for me. When I go and do, uh, summits on the air activations, I usually have something new with me. Uh, or have some sort of I'm plan I plan something new each time to make sure that it's uh, it's not the same you know especially if I've already done the peak before and it's not a new peak then you know I'll take a different antenna I'll take a different paddle I'll uh, have a different goal as far as uh, how many contacts I can make or I'll try a different band there's always something I'm trying uh, experimenting with or trying to do differently uh, QRO QRP uh, Mike and Dan what are some of the things that you try to mix up or do to mix things up a little bit. Uh, let's start with Dan. If you have it, do you, do you do anything different Dan every time you do uh, an activation? I, I, I'm terrible about that. I'm kind of a creature of habit. So my goal yeah. for every, you know, thing is to try something new and not, uh, not fall over. So, <laughs> okay. but, uh, but I would like to try, you know, like a, you know, an NFED or something like that. Um, I really like my link dipoles. So, but I'd like to try an infed just because then I don't have to get up quite so often to change bands, and I would actually get a few extra bands that I currently don't uh, really operate on. Uh, I would really like to try, you know, ten meters, um, and I'd really like to try uh, digital, uh, something along like a PSK thirty one or something like that. That's uh, digital modes for me. That's that's uh, my favorite digital mode. Um, my only issue is, is I need to work on, you know, interfacing something to my KX3 in order to be able to do that uh, without taking a lot of bulk uh, along with me. Yeah. Well, and, and me, just real quick, I, I've been le lately trying to get uh, a six meter contact. I have a uh, six meter oh. I've been taking with me lately, and this is the time to do it. Uh, June is, and, and in, into July now is the best time to to get to me uh, to get uh, six meters I haven't had any luck yet as far as dx goes I've, I've had some local contacts but nothing dx but that's another way i like to mix it up so uh, mike what is there anything you do uh, from t one uh, activation to the other uh not so much uh actually I, i'm very curious about your uh, about the uh, activations that you guys do in the southwest it's just a, such a different environment than what i'm used to and uh i, I you're talking about getting out early is there is there a, a I can't, I, I don't think that way. That's not my experience. Cause you know, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm here in the, in, you know, in the, in the orange bowl of the Midwest. And, uh, yeah. uh, so, you know, well, if yeah. it, we complain when it gets up to 90 degrees and, and it's like, well, you know, we, this heat wave is killing us. And <laughs> yeah, well, it is, it is a different kind of heat. It's true. It really is. Um, uh, we're not really humid here usually. We do get a little bit humid now this time of year because of the monsoon, which is it's just these uh, uh, moisture comes in and just kind of pops up and drops rain and stuff. But uh, like yeah, uh, the last activation Sandy and I did, uh, which was uh, just Saturday. Yeah, it was what's today? It was yesterday morning. Uh, we got up at 4 a.m. And when we left our house at 4 a.m., well, we left at 4.30, uh, it was 90 degrees. Uh, so it, the overnight low was 90 degrees. And so, really, yeah. So, so we we went. Uh, we just drove thirty minutes over to Shaw Butte, which is a it's a, it's just a little two pointer mountain that's in the middle of town, in the middle of the city, and it has some uh, radio towers on it. And we just drove to the base of that. A lot of people are up that early exercising. We passed a lot of people because uh, here in here, yeah, here in the in the uh, Arizona air desert, you've got to you know beat the heat, and once the sun comes up, it's not that great. 
And so, yeah, we just, it was an out, a mile and a, a mile and a half hike. We just hiked to the top, uh, pulled out our HTs, uh, called CQ for 15 minutes and then, uh, packed it up and went back down. And, um, lucky for us on Saturday, it was overcast. And so when we got to our car, it was, it was 91. Uh, but usually that's not the case. Usually, you know, cause the sun was behind the clouds. Usually it's, it, it would have been about a hundred or so by that time, by, by 7 AM, 7 30. And, uh, so Usually people don't activate in the Phoenix metro area or in the desert uh, in the summer, unless it's mm. early in the morning. Uh, most of the guys here in uh, when we're talking soda and uh, some on the air, parks on the air, uh, and even just getting out, we'll go up north to Flagstaff, to uh, Sholo, kind of up, up where the pines are. It's about a three-hour drive, maybe four some cases up to the high country and then you know your your game to it's 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 nice all you know highs are in the what 80s usually and and yep. overnight lows are in the 50s and uh, sometimes lower so uh that's how we do it we, so we usually uh are in the summertime we're up north and activating and then and then when it gets cooler and the and it's like snowing up in north then we have then we do these desert mountains because then the you know in the desert it's it's perfect weather and so we ha actually have the benefit here in Arizona of activating year round uh, in in comfortable environment and uncomfortable conditions uh, so because you know it's just back we just choose which area we go up north or down here and and it's always going to be relatively comfortable so but yeah doing doing it in the summertime here in the desert it's it's it kind of is a, a challenge so to speak or something new or unique or a little different to outside the norm. Uh, and, and you get bonus points. And so the real, whole reason we do it, uh, Sandy and I and others in the area do it is it's five points for a two pointer as, as an easy, mm -hmm. easy act, activate activation, five points. You, you do two of those, you get a 10 pointer. It's the same, it's equivalent. So, you know, it, down here, uh, also you got to do it early in the morning because nowadays a lot of those same peaks will be closed by 11 o'clock AM, uh, just because of the heat. So. Yeah. Yep. You know your 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 um uh your, your VHF operations are, that's absolutely non-existent here. Oh you yeah. You just don't. To if I were to drag a VHF radio and and start a call in on 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 six five two, I get maybe one or two accidentals. A couple of guys driving by on the expressway. Uh, so it's just not big. I, so that to me, that VHF is fascinating. I, yeah, I wish yeah. we had that. I really do. That'd be cool. Even, well, you know, even in some of our more remote areas, we do pretty well with VHF. Generally, there's, you know, quite a few places where there really isn't, but I think now, Charlie, I would say we're fairly conditioned to kind of listen on VHF as well, uh, mm -hmm. nowadays. Yeah. And, and the difference is Mike, and maybe the, uh, and people talk to me, uh, mention that all the time, how, you know, the VHF part of it is uh, non-existent where they're at. It's the community. It really is. And, and, uh, for you, I'm, I'd recommend maybe, you know, you have this distribution list or this Facebook thing where you get people to go out on the parks, mm -hmm. you know, utilize that group of people and say, Hey, I'm going to go out on a park and I'd like to see how many people I can get on VHF put up your VHF antenna and then see how many people you can work that way. Uh, when you, and that's what Sandy and I did, you know, we, mm -hmm. we put a little uh, notice out saying, Hey, you know, we're, we're going to be up early. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you can get up and, and work us, that'd be great. Um, actually the, the activation before this one we did on the, the Wednesday before, uh, I actually texted a few people and woke them up at, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it was probably six o'clock in the morning and like, Hey, I need some more contacts. We can't, we were only, we only had three at that point. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, we can get them, but we do have this event, uh, that we organize uh, around this morning activity uh, called mini morning madness. And occasionally, uh, used to go much, it was more, more so, uh, previous years than this year. I think COVID's kind of died down now and people are not as available, but we had up to 10, I think the highest was 13 different people on a summit at the same time at 6 a.m., uh, plus people chasing. Uh, but it takes some organization. It's not just, you know, we get up there and, and uh, expect to have a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Dude, that sounds like a great time. That, 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 that hits all the little, little buttons. It's got the social aspect. It's got the radio aspect. And, yeah. And there's a little bit of adventure associated with it. I, I th that's that's the magic in my yep. mind. It really yep. is. Uh, I, I was going to mention one other thing that we do. Uh, uh, 
is, uh, and it, maybe it's not exactly portable ops, but uh, is uh, we, we are a mobile operation in the Wisconsin CUSO party every year. And I got to tell you, I, I kind of rate that the equivalent of sailboat racing. It's more fun than it should be legal. It just, if you haven't gone, if you haven't gone portable in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a QSO party, it's, it is just nonstop go. I, honest to God, I, I think I sleep for two days at the end of that. It's just, it's crazy. Wow. Just crazy. Sounds so, really fun. Well, I, I'm not sure how much fun it would be in, in, in zipping around Arizona, but in, in Wisconsin and, and there, you know, the counties are, 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 there's a ton of them and, and, you know, any direction you go, it's 20, 25 minutes to the next county line. So you're always moving around. It's, it's a lot of fun. It really is. Yeah. My friend, Chris, uh, N1 CLC said he's, he's out of San Diego. He says it's usually overcast and 102. And then he <laughs> says, it's a challenge to stay alive. You can keep a summer <laughs> bonus. <laughs> hi, hi. Very funny. Uh, uh Chris, uh, he, I know you oh. like to do summer bonus. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Do you get summer bonuses in soda as opposed to winter bonuses? Up we get both. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. It's worth five points when you get oh. up and do that. Uh, it's it's a two pointer, but okay. that's what makes it worth it. Is it's actually five points. Uh, each of the two pointers are five. You get the three point extra points, and that's why we get up early at six a.m. and do it. Is because it's you know, it's. Uh, I missed that nuance. Uh, Paul uh, VA six MPM up in in the uh, up in the Canadian Rockies. Uh, was whining and, and if if Canadians can I don't I think maybe illegal Vince could probably speak to that maybe illegal for Canadians to whine I'm not sure uh, but yeah. uh, uh, Paul was kind of whining about not getting a winter bonus on some peak that he was on that uh, I don't know it was like 20 below zero or something and he was outside of the date range and and he didn't get his winter bonus I was like well, I'd appeal. I'd appeal. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I would be really frustrated with that myself. I put, went through all the effort and, and then, I, you know, didn't get, to, I've actually, that's happened to me a time or two, believe it or not, but, uh, where I've, I've missed the, actually all the points. So one time I went up and did a, a winter bonus. It was the other way around. I, I did activated a peak and I didn't realize that I had acti I activated it in like December. I forgot that I had activated it in, uh, in the January. And so I didn't get any points. <laughs> <laughs> getting points for the dang thing <laughs> so yeah that's the way it goes sometimes um i, I uh, find it odd that the soda people award life-threatening situations or reward life-threatening situations i know right it should, it's, <laughs> it shouldn't motivate that type of thing <laughs> I, I the guy who invented soda must have been a hockey player or something exactly. i don't know <laughs> shane says i've ne i've yet to make a two meter contact while doing soda or poda and uh yeah i i i believe it i i haven't done one i haven't been able to make a contact on poda yet myself actually and i've been trying um and then the little ranch uh, El, El ranchito he says you have to create the vhf environment and it's true you do uh it, mm -hmm. i mean it depends on a lot of there's some factors but if you really want to be guaranteed to get some of those vhf contacts then yeah you, you probably need to to get your your group together and and organize a little bit uh, so here's Vince. He says it's it's not it is not illegal for us to <laughs> bellyache. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Vince. We will we'll, uh, we'll note that one. And then, uh, Chris, thank you so much. Chris uh, gave us a little donation. Appreciate it. He says climb mountain, work radio, the the Zen of soda. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. And uh, Shane says the Canadians are allowed to complain. They just have to apologize for it at the end. That, okay, that explains it. Thank you. That's, 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 there's a rim shot. Where's the rim shot? <laughs> that's the magic right there. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, is there anything else we wanted to talk about that uh, we didn't cover yet? Um, I think we, we, we've we pretty much answered the question. I mean, what is soda to you or not soda? What is portable radio to you? Uh I guess the, the point we wanted to drive home was, was you don't have to do parks on the air or, or summits on the air in order to get out and do portable. In fact, uh, you guys know, Steve, I'm sure some of you do, uh, W G O A T, uh, with the, with yep. the, he had the goats and stuff like that, uh, peanut and, uh, rooster, uh, talking to him. I was an interview I did with him a while ago, or we did with him. And, and he mm. mentioned that there was a time when soda and poda did not exist, not too and not too and the not too distant past, and uh, there were other things that people did. There was the polar bear and uh, other 
events that were much less grand, uh, but still kind of like the whole idea of what I was talking about with VHF, where you organize and you get out there and you have fun and uh, you just uh, you get out with your buddies. Um, but there was no points given or anything like that. It was just it was just getting out and re operating portable. And so don't let par parks on the air or summits on the air, uh, the lack thereof in your area, discourage you from not getting on the air and, and operating portable. It, there's so many other ways in which you can do it that are that are very enjoyable. And and Mike's mentioned a few, and Dan and I have, have kind of mentioned a few. Uh, any other ideas out there before we uh, before we go and, and wrap things up? Camping. Just take your family camping and, uh, you know, get out there and put your antenna up and, you know, play with the kids for a while, then put your antenna up, get your HF gear out and, and enjoy some making some contacts. Um, I think I think most of us, you know, suffer from, you know, high noise floors in the cities that we live in nowadays. And uh, you would be surprised how noise floor is just, you know, non-existent out there. Uh, in the middle of a national forest somewhere or at a campground. And uh, you never know, you might uh, get some folks stop by, ask you what you're doing, and you might inspire, you know, a future ham. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I, you know, I was going to say, just if you've got a passion for doing something, just go out and do it. And, um, uh, and you know, and, and don't keep it to yourself. Talk to people about it. Tell, tell people what you're up to. And uh, every once in a while, you catch lightning in a bottle, and uh, and it's something will catch on. And and if it's if it's fun for you, and it it you know you can bet that it's going to be fun for somebody else. So it, it starts somewhere is is kind of the point. So get it started. And yeah. not every you know just like when you're making a, a fire, not not every sometimes you got to add more kindling. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so it doesn't always go the first round, but. Uh, Go and have fun. It, this is this is what it's about having yeah. having a great time and, and getting out there and enjoying it. And and Dan, I was going to mention, make the comment that even if your house has a lot of noise, you might be surprised the the park six blocks away might not. Very true. You know. Yeah, I I really like what you said, Mike. I think I am a strong uh, supporter of of those comments. And the comments I'm talking about are that uh, you can be a leader in in making uh, portable radio fun for not just you but for others and part of the fun of portable radio is is the enjoyment of the community and 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 having some sort of a community that you're doing portable radio with not always but uh, I think in for the most part and that can happen the way you described you know with your uh, your Wednesday uh, CW ops thing uh, it could be the like uh, Eric with the lunch lunchtime on the air. It could be uh, the Thursday experimentation club, uh, it, you know, but it takes somebody to, to step up and say, hey, I'm going to go do this. Do you want to come along? And I think you'd be surprised at how quickly it grows and how much interest uh, there is. Because you, you mentioned that, right, Mike, that you just said, hey, I'm going to do this. And all of a sudden it just kind of it, it took, took on a life of itself. It was very organic. Uh, and, I, you know, to, to put a cap on things, I think we should tip our hat to Dan's idea in the pre-show, which was HOA on the air. <laughs> <laughs> that would, uh... just, just remember, you get five bonus points for every, you know, nosy Karen that comes by and tells you you have to leave. <laughs> but you have to document it now. Yep. And, uh, and, and, and you get bonus points for every citation you get, right? There you go. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think you get a big bonus point if Karen documents it for you. <laughs> Even better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good point here uh, from a w WECB640. Uh, he says, enthusiasm is infectious. And it's true. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 If you if you enjoy something, you know, it, it's kind of like what Mike said. You know, if you enjoy something, show that you enjoy it. You would be surprised how many people are interested and they're just happy that you're happy so they take an interest in in things that people enjoy yeah all right well so um i really i guess let's take a few more minutes uh mike uh just transitioning sure. really quick i wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you got involved in cw2 and when we didn't get to that so let's just uh, we've got five minutes or so uh and let's talk about how how you got involved in more in uh, cw uh cw was what I refer to as my, my, 
my my only option um when i first became a ham i had the world's lousiest station and if i wasn't going dit da i don't think i could have talked to my neighbor <laughs> so <clears throat> that's i it, it was that was it and i because of that i've always had a, uh, an, a you know a, a very nice relationship with cw so you started um, early <clears throat> yeah and it, the code has never been a problem for me speed wise and whatnot i'm not a super copier i'm not a you know a guy that's going to go a, a blazingly fast but i'm certainly comfortable at, at at 30 and 35 words per minute and uh I, and I, I I love having uh, rag chews on CW at you know twenty five or twenty seven words per minute. And more, faster than that, my hand wears out too quick for writing even writing notes. So yeah. Well, how uh, do you? I mean, you've had you've done it so long. Uh, but is there any any advice you'd give for people? There's a lot of people who really want to learn Morse code. Uh, what would you tell? What would you say to them? Um, it the current day Morse code scenarios is a little more difficult than when we were when I was a kid, if you will. Uh, back in, in the 70s, when I got started off there, you know, the novice bands were awash for people going five words per minute, which is incredibly slow. But there, there was no impediment to jumping on the air. And now it seems like if you can't go 20 words per minute or so, there's a reluctance to actually go on the air. Um, there are there are some mechanisms out there uh, that encourage slower speed, but they're not a lot, and I, I'm that then that's kind of a problem. Um, we started a net in Milwaukee uh, that we call the uh, slow speed CW QSO net, and it's Monday nights at eight o'clock, and we meet on on the v, on a VHF repeater. And, and have and everybody checks in. There's only three or four of us uh, regulars, if you will. But we go from there to a, a, an HF, and frankly, lately we use uh, six meters, and and just do CW only at that point. So we meet, greet on on VHF, and then QSY over to uh, to six meters and do the CW portion. And if somebody gets lost in the in the equation or doesn't quite understand or, or loses, you know, the copy. That you've got the VHF, you know, and and so if you're as as a net control, you you jump on and you go, hey, uh, you know, Bill, did you, are you did you copy that? Did you are you getting it? Are you you want us to slow down? And so it's a friendly format for for people to knock the rust off their CW skills, <laughs> which is what the game is. Uh, we're not trying to teach CW, but we're trying to make we're trying to let them know that hey, here's here's how the current formats are in CW, and and it's okay to go slow and and it's fine. And, and so to make a friendly environment. And I, I think we need more of that. Um, yeah. And if, if that translates into people jumping on board CW, great. You know, there's a bunch of, of, of like QRP um, CW type contests, and those all go off at oh, 17, 18 words per minute. So it's not fast. Yeah. Uh, and so you can make contacts that way and, and get, get a little more comfortable. Uh, it's there. There are opportunities. I think you got to look around for them a little bit more, but uh, it's uh, they're there. And don't try to whitewash it. CW, you got to work to get good at CW. You just do, and yeah. and I think it's well worth it because I can take a, a five watt signal and 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 make great QSOs. So. Thank you. So, a uh, reminder, real quick, we've just got a few few seconds left. Uh, we've got a happy hour with uh, Jason Henry to 2.0 over on his channel. It's uh, already kind of the uh, pre streams going. So, uh, hop on over there and join us over there if you will. Uh, and, uh, but, but just real quick, I wanted to thank you, Mike, for coming on. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, you've, you've, you're a, you're an inspiration as far as portable radio goes to me. And I appreciate you, uh, you sharing your, th your uh, experiences. Well, I thank you very much for the invitation. This has been a lot of fun. I was kind of nervous. I didn't really, you know, know. And, and so this was this has been a, a great deal of fun, Charlie. I really appreciate it. And a pleasure to meet Dan as well. Thanks for coming on today. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, hang, we're going to end it then, but uh, hang around and let's talk uh, uh, post chat here real quick, uh, if we can. All right, everybody. We're going to we're going to we're going to close it down. See ya. Bye bye. Seventy three. Seven three.